The History of Baking Man's need for food is universal. Since the beginning of time, he has depended so much on wild plants and animals as his primary sources of food. As he roamed in search of wild animals for food, he satisfied his hunger by eating raw grains of plants. Later, he discovered that when these grains are planted in soil, more grains are produced and that he can raise animals for food too. Man, then, saw no need to move from one place to another in search of food. In some places of the world, the grains grown by man are what we now call wheat. At first, people ate raw grains but later they learned to cook these. They learned to grind the seeds between stones to make flour. More than 8,000 years ago, the Swiss lake dwellers learned how to mix flour with water to make dough. They poured the mixture on heated stones to bake it. The result was flat, hard, and leavened bread. More than 8,000 years ago, the Swiss lake dwellers the first leavened bread was probably made by accident by a royal baker in Egypt. The baker made the mixture of crushed grain, water, and sugar, and had set this aside. His attention was diverted somewhere and forgot about the mixture. When he remembered it, the story goes, the dough has expanded. In his fright, he kneads a dough and baked it on hot stones and frightfully offered his bread to his royal masters. The royal masters liked his bread, and so he stayed in the job. That was the accidental birth of the leavened bread. The ancient Egyptians later learned how to control the kind of yeast in their bread. Each time they baked, they set aside some of the leavened dough to mix with the next batch. In this way, they could be sure of having the same taste and texture first known bakers in the history. The Greeks were the master bakers of antiquity with more than 70 different recipes for bread. As early as 200 BC, the Greeks established public bakeries. When the Romans conquered Greece, the conquerors further improved the industry. The Romans turned baking into a large-scale industry and passed many laws regarding the quality of bread. Poor people generally ate coarse, dark bread. Fine, white bread was only for the rich. In Europe, during the Middle Ages, white bread was also the bread of the rich and the privileged. Often, dark rye bread was the staple food of most people. In 1604, when the English migrated to America, they brought with them the art of baking. Baking was a flourishing industry both in Europe and the USA. Wheat comes to the Philippines. Because of our tropical climate, wheat is not grown in the Philippines. However, records have shown that when the Spaniards were with us sometime in the early 17th century, they introduced the planting of wheat in some provinces, particularly in Batangas, Laguna, Cagayan Valley, and Cavite, mainly for the purpose of using them in the making of bread for the Holy Communion. When the American came to the Philippines, the Filipinos started buying flour from the United States. By 1958, the Republic Flour Mills was in operation, and instead of buying flour from the USA, people started to buy wheat instead. Presently, the Filipinos buy wheat from the USA and from Canada to supply the needs of several flour mills now operating in the country. Until modern technology can come up with a way of producing wheat in the Philippines, the Filipinos will always depend on the importation of wheat to meet the growing demands for both baked products that only wheat can fill. There are a lot of job opportunities in baking. Occupational possibilities for a person who has some workable knowledge of baking abound especially in the urban areas or even in the rural areas of the country. Filipinos have learned to use bread as part of the family food. 
there are several ways by which an individual who has adequate knowledge and skills in baking can use such skills to make oneself sufficient. Some of which are by working in a bakery. Skills learned or developed when one is still young will be with the individual all his or her life. These knowledge and skills will make one asset to a bakery when one gets employed. In a bakery, one who has some background in baking will be employed at first as a semi-skilled worker. The experience one gains at this level plus the knowledge and training she had as a high school student in baking are stepping stones to positions in the skilled level. Higher position and better pay can then be expected. Second, accepting orders for baked products. Housewives have now resorted to having others do their baking. While bake shops abound in most communities now, people prefer to have some home-baked products instead of merely buying from a bakery pro counter. Accepting orders for homemade baked delicacies is now becoming lucrative home business. The following, however, must be done to meet the needs of this activity. A working space of about 4 by 6, an oven that can accommodate at least two double recipe baking pans, a cooking range with a built-in oven, a heavy-duty electric mixer, sets of baking pans of various shapes and sizes, a refrigerator, a freezer, a refrigerator, other tools and equipment for baking. Initially, a small sum that can be used as a capital. Helpers who could be trained to help the person who sets up the small business. A delivery boy would also be needed to deliver orders for big delicacies if the family does not have a vehicle to do this. This personnel could also be trained to do odd jobs related to the business. Adequate ad advertisement to friends, relatives, acquaintances, and even strangers to make them aware of the business. This is achieved through testimonies from people who have tried and tested the products, putting up a simple sign in the vicinity of the house like orders of cakes accepted, advertising through the social network. Next one is established goodwill and confidence of the customers. How do we achieve this? One is by exercising courtesy in dealing with the customer. Be reliable and honest. Once one agreed to deliver on a particular date and time, be sure that it should be done. Maintain the quality standard of the baked products. Another possible job is by putting up a bakery and a bake shop. Personnel needs of the bakery or bake shop are as follows. The manager, usually this is the owner, he manages the entire operation. The chief baker, he is commonly called the maestro. He takes charge of the preparation of the recipes for baking. Assistant baker, the assistant and understudy of the chief baker. The oven helper, attends to the baking of the bread in, this, in the big oven. The cashier, it handles the money from the actual sale of the day. The counter sale girls, attend to the finished baked products from the baking pan counting the pieces of bread and displaying these on the counter and portioning the baked products like pies and cakes. Portions or cuts should be uniform so that prices could be set for each portion. Also, they look after cleanliness and orderliness of the bake shop. Next and last thing is the work area, tools and equipment. Work area of the bakery can accommodate the following. The measuring and weighing center, the mixing and other preparation centers, the baking center, and the finishing center. And that will be all for today's lesson. Thank you for listening and happy baking. Ciao!